Yo, what's good? And welcome back to the channel. You are now rocking with Agent R, always ready. And in this video, we're going to show you how we deal with Lyra Lust, right? We're going into the KC Cup. You have to have an answer for this toxic deck. Okay, so I'm going to show you one of the ways that I deal with it. I am having such a fun time right now playing with Sky Striker. So much so that I went and got the play map. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna show the deck list uh, right now because I did start playing with Link Dark Rays a little bit. It's not, um, if you watch my previous video, it's not the skill that I uh, typically use and it's for consistency sake. Um, I, th I still think that any skill that will put a card on the field for you to get rid of with the area zero is preferable like this one is clearly for like attack because you get a boost on the attack so you can swing with hayate or hayate but um yes the one with shetty and putting the continuous spell on the field being able to get rid of that gives a level of consistency because then if you use vector blast you already have uh three uh, or more spells in the graveyard to make all of your other sky striker spell cards live right so that's that's what we're going for when we do that i also put two shark cannon in here which is one of the answers okay <laughs> that we deal with with lira lusk right because what you're trying to do is stop your opponent from being able to protect themselves so if i just pull this up that should yeah there we go so this is the problem the brown one all right, Cobalt Sparrow is the problem because when you use this monster to XC summon, your opponent can't target this card with effects. And then they're just sitting on the board, getting rid of cards so that they can protect themselves and not take any damage. And you can't target it. So what do you do? You have to attack the graveyard, which this thing will be in there. You also have an answer with book of eclipse because then you can move those monsters face down but you have to be careful you have to be really careful with this one you want to allow your opponent to fill up their their board because their skill will allow them to remove this face down if it's the only one and if they have a full board they can still go into their combo so you have to be careful with that one the other answer here of course is vector blast can mill and if it's in the graveyard, then you use Shark Cannon. And Shark Cannon can banish uh, the Brown Sparrow, the Cobalt Sparrow, from the graveyard. And it's a slower, I shouldn't say slower, but um, on turn one, you're going to have to wait for your opponent to set it up. So if at all you need to be using DD Crow, all right, because DD Crow can banish that card from the graveyard. So that they won't be able to use it that is also an answer but shout out to my chat over on twitch uh because uh, we were trying to figure out answers on like what do we like how do we answer like, what do we do with this deck and we did have we had uh, an interesting answer that we were playing around for a bit but it i mean it's, it's it's a normal card for a reason let me skip ahead so i can like pull it up for you here we go the card is Dragon Ball Changer, okay? <laughs> I mean, Star Changer. You target a face-up monster on the field, and then you can increase or decrease that target's level by one. It is a quick play spell, so if you're looking to remain free to play, this can be a viable answer because the birds are already level one, so you have to increase, you have to choose to increase the level, okay? So... And that way, if they put the Sparrow on the board, let me just get rid of this so I can go back. Well, then now it's level two and then they can't use that card for any of their combos at all, right? So keep in mind, again, if their board's open, they'll be able to send that away, try to go into more of the combo. Uh, those are just focusing on my deck here. Like there's the Star Changer. Uh, you have Book of Eclipse to face down shark cannon can banish you also have dd crow to remove just trying to get you in the mindset of uh those cards uh, i think special summon um trap cards I, I know there's a 
I know there's a trap hole. Let me see. One of the trap holes does it too. Yeah, if your opponent special summons a monster in defense, banish those monsters that were uh, summoned in defense position. So this is another free to play option. Uh, where's another one? There's not, that's not the one that I'm actually thinking about there. When two or more are special summoned at the same time, destroy all the monsters on the field. You have a giant trap hole. Uh, where's another one? Links, that's a link summon. Those are the ones that I'm thinking of. I know there's another one, but I, maybe it's not in the game. But there's another one that deals with like really low level uh, attack monsters, like 500 or less. You can use um, that card as well. But those are some of the ways that you deal with Lear Lusk, okay? You're gonna have to deal with it. Those are some of the plays. Now, I do have uh, a couple of replays here, at least two to show you. Um, there were more, but I mean, it's hard to not play the game. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go down here. And we're gonna check out these last two. We're gonna, we're gonna go over like exactly what happened in here. And then one of these plays, I'm gonna show you like why you toggle on, okay? Cause it's amazing. All right, so this is one of the scenarios I'm talking about. So when, when you're playing, right, you have so many win conditions. Right, naturally, you're going to try to remove the opponent's life points either by attacking or by like effect damage. But it's not the only way to win in Yu Gi Oh, right? Like, even with Duel Links, you need to be mindful of like your card pool, what's left in your deck, etc. So, they're going to use a win, the wind channeler, and discard so they can go ahead and grab the warbler. And they put the a sapphire swallow. They put blue in the grave. Now they're putting brown in the grave. So they're gonna use the warbler. And then the warbler is gonna go ahead and activate its effect. All right, the warbler is gonna go ahead and bring out that sparrow from the graveyard. Okay, there we go. So that's why I said how DD Crow would come into play. It's almost like dealing with um, when photon dragon was like the main thing right like use that dd crow on that dragon in the grave your opponent like just insta scoops so bird calls activated is going to grab the uh yellow they added uh say like gray to their hand also so then gray is going to activate its effect it's going to come to the field going to grab the sanctuary such an annoying card and so we're already having to deal with the fact that we won't be able to target this opponent, which really sucks. Now, we don't necessarily need to target the uh, opponent's monster when we are working with Sky Striker, but it is going to be a lot more work to try to make that pop off, especially when I'm not using the consistency skill. I'm using the skill mainly for like attack and survival. Also, shout out to Duel Links. So, like, the animations, they actually keep getting better after all this time. Really impressed with them. So, yellow is going to activate its effect from the hand. It's going to grab blue from the grave. So, you see how they just keep coming. Maybe somebody in the KC Cup will run Grave Creepers. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much leverage that could get you. But if you put DD Crow in there, I mean, you might, you might win a lot of games with that. All right, so Bird Sanctuary is going to go ahead and activate. It's going to draw a card because it has a monster on the field with three or more materials. Then they're going to go ahead and XC summon yet again. So I, I actually really have a lot of respect for this combo deck. Really weak monsters, but they hit heavy. Okay. Ensemble Blue Robin. All right, so this is going to be on the board now. And uh, I forgot what Canary does after that. Oh yeah, it gains 200 attack. Also, its control can't switch. So, also this doesn't matter, by the way, because we negate the effect of the opponent's monster with the Widow Anchor, and then we steal it anyway. So, I'm gonna activate Terraforming. Okay, I'm gonna grab Area Zero. I'm just activating it because I'm trying to build up the graveyard to make the cards live. All right, then we're gonna go for multi roll. Multi roll is gonna go ahead and send that one. So we have three spell cards. We're live, but I'm gonna go ahead and special summon our Ray. 
So they're going to activate in response so they can try to go ahead and send that card away. We're going to activate Ray's effect in response. Now I'm going to go ahead and special summon the uh, Shizuku. Now they're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to activate Eagle Booster. So we're going to protect our monster from all other effects and we can't be destroyed by a battle because we have three in the grave. Now, the important thing to remember is Shizuku, after grabbing Engage, we are lowering the opponent's monster attack by the number of the spells we have in the graveyard, okay? Activating Multi-Roll to grab back the Eagle Booster to set up another Protect. Okay, they activate Compulse. So then we're going to respond and we activate the Eagle Booster, okay? So you should see that 100 attack over here from the Nightingale go down to the... Oh, oh, I'm mistaken. We already used it, so it's banished, so it doesn't go to the grave. Alright, so blue activates its effect. We're going to hit up the gray. We're going to special summon both. So we're going to go into another Xyz. But you see how their attack has been reduced to zero. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and activate that. We're going to stop gray from being able to activate its effect. And they're going to go ahead and ditch with the Nightingale. So they're going to put the Warbler in the grave. We're going to take that. You see how they... So Gray is going to go ahead and add itself. It's so stupid. It's like a walking um, Swords of Revealing Light, if you think about it. Swords of Revealing Light with legs. Okay, so they made it to where... They have space on the board again. So they're going to summon blue. They're going to go into another XC summon. Promenade Thresh. Okay. Blue activates its effect. You can target Lear Lusk in the grave. Attach it to this card as a material. All right, now Promenade is going to activate its effect and it's going to return a spell back into the deck. So they, you know, spun it. Now we activate Engage. So we're going to draw a card of our choice and then we draw a card off the top of the deck. Nightingale is going to go ahead and ditch to protect itself. Also, it's going to keep the effect to not take damage that turn. Okay. So we do have the Psychic Blade for big damage, but we can't use it yet. We're going to need to survive this turn. And we're solely relying on Shizuku's ability to lower attack points. <laughs> We've got 55 life, 5,500 life. So they're going to take 2,500 off of us. Like, see how destructive this card is? Like, this card is disgusting. Alright. It's able to swing five times. It'll swing up to the number of materials that it has on it at the time. And there are even um, trap cards for that, right? To remove all of the materials off of the monster. So you have a lot of options. I'm just trying to get you thinking creatively here. So we have another multi-roll. Gonna activate Dart Bribe. So Dark Bribe is going to negate this card's activation. And it's getting blown up. But we draw a Book of Eclipse. So now we're going to activate Vector Blast. Vector Blast is live. We're going to mill off the top of both decks. Two cards. But also, we're going to spin back this Nightingale because it's in the extra zone. We're going to set the Eclipse. Unfortunately, there's an MST. So that Eclipse is gone. But we're good. It's... Look. I want you to see. Okay, they drew yellow. We are down. Six cards on my side and three in theirs in the deck. And we are reducing the attack. All right, yellow is going to activate its effect. It's going to grab blue. Everybody's going to get summoned. This time it doesn't have as many materials, but they're going back into the Nightingale.
It's very smart plays, by the way, by the opponent. So, at this point, you can already see, like, I've already noticed what the situation is with the deck. So, I'm going to try to focus on getting this player to deck out. And I know how, I know exactly how to do it. Alright, so you're going to keep activating those effects, and so now it's at 200 attack. I'm in no way bothered. You're going to activate the Sanctuary to draw a card, and they're going to swing for a thousand damage. This is hilarious. <laughs> like, if Shizuku is the MVP, okay? You have to understand this. But in this duel, I'm looking for answers from the extra deck, and... Shizuku is usually not the answer, it's usually just searching for cards. But man, I am so fortunate this thing is just sitting on the field. Even if I scroll back up, like, I summoned this a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of Shizuku because now I have the win condition. They have two cards left in their deck. So guess what we can do? Guess what I haven't summoned? Alright. Some of you are already aware. And right, good on you. This is why I say prove your meta. Be the meta. It's not about Lyrilus, it's about you and what your deck has. Kagari is going to grab a card from the graveyard to my hand, and they're going to use Nightingale to ditch a card to stop from getting hit. But we don't need to hit them. We're going to go ahead and mill off the top two more. And now I'm just going to troll because Rose's effect activates because the opponent's monster left the field from the extra deck. And so now I'm going to summon Ray. Now, what am I doing? I'm just showing what else I could have done. Now I'm going to go ahead and Link Summon into Nightmare Unicorn. Now, if I use Nightmare Unicorn on that card, they'll, they'll have another turn. I'm just going to throw it back because I don't need a field. Not when the opponent has to draw and they have nothing to draw. GG's. <laughs> they were working with a 20 card deck. I was working with just a little more and we win. We're going second again. I don't really mind that. And we, we got somebody here. We got one, the soul of light and darkness. I am still using Link Dark Rays, trying to test which one I really want to use going into the second round of KC Cup. Now, if you're not familiar with Soul of Light and Darkness, I'll bring it up. So at the beginning of the duel, we add the Soul of Light and Darkness and one Super Soldier Ritual to the grave. Uh, during the duel, you can only summon Gaia the Fierce Knight monsters, BLSs, and monsters without rank or level, so Link's. Once per turn, you can activate the following effect when you special summon a BLS monster. You can add a BLS ritual monster when there are no cards with the same name in the grave and the field and add it from the deck to the hand. Then you can select up to three of the banished cards and return them to the grave. After doing so, once per duel only, if there's a BLS on the field, you can set a ritual spell from the deck to the field. Okay, so this, th look, th this is a lot, all right? This skill is actually kind of busted still. Uh, adding all this extra fodder to give them a turn one. So let's see how we handle this with Sky Striker. Believe in your deck. So you're going to activate Super Soldier Ritual. They're going to banish the Mystical Elf and the Karibo. And they're going to summon their uh, BLS. Okay. And then they're going to grab the BLS Legendary Swordsman, activate Chaos Form. They're going to do it again, banishing the Dark Magician and the Sphere Karibo. Now we're staring down 6,000 attack on the board from a bunch of BLS cards. A bunch of BLS set to and pass. It's not a bad board at all. So how are we going to break this board? All right, we're going to activate Engage. Keep in mind, I always want to draw two off of it. So we're going to go ahead and use Vector Blast. Nobody's in the extra. We're just trying to get stuff in the grave because I have uh, a Rose and I have a Ray. So we're going to summon. I'm going to immediately go ahead and go into Kagari. Okay, because I want the extra draw. I'm looking for a specific card. 
And instead, I choose to go for destruction of the face down, which is hilarious. I'm a, I remember this. I'm actually not going to get to use this. Ray is going to come back. And then they're going to activate Crackdown. So I don't even get to use it. So I actually, I went for jamming waves. It was the wrong move. Should have went for engage. But I'm going to hop back off. Because I'm going to make this live. Always make the spells live. Widow Anchor. I'm going to go ahead and yoink. The Legendary. Going to Special Summon Rose. And I'm going to activate the Shark Cannon. And I'm going to summon again. What am I up to? I'm trying to stack this board. Okay. I take their Endymion. And I put Rose on the board. And I take the Legendary Swordsman. I'm going to boost their monster because I can attack with that one. And then I'm going to use my other monsters. And this time I'm actually going to go into the Nightmare Unicorn. But I'm actually going to be able to spin it this time and use it. So the gemming waves wasn't completely useless because now it's the fodder I need to spin that back. And GG no re. All right, there we go. A lot of people aren't using battle traps anymore. So you're almost guaranteed, like once you hit the, the battle phase, that you can just wrap that up. But that's what I had for that. I, I want to show off a little bit of the spice that is, now they, some people have Sky Strikers at tier two. They are tier one in my heart. But this is what I mean by be the meta, all right? Know what you want to do with your deck and try to think about that game holistically to have answers. That's what I've got for now. Again, this has been Agent R. Make sure to like this video, share it with your loved ones and your friends, and consider subscribing for more gaming content in general here as we go into the back end of 2024. Until next time, much love. Prove your meta. Peace.